You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life, that there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind. In the year 1919, a virtually unknown German mathematician named Theodor Kaluza suggested a very bold and in some ways very bizarre idea. He proposed that our universe might actually have more than the three dimensions that we are all aware of. That is, in addition to left, right, back, forth, and up, down, Kaluza proposed that there might be additional dimensions of space that for some reason we don't yet see. I'd like to tell you something about the story of these extra dimensions. Immediately you'll find the hell of a lot is going on in your body or in your perceptual field that you never noticed before and a lot of it is hilarious and a lot of it is sexy and a lot of it is thrilling and a lot of it just blows you over with mystical awe. You see, Einstein's equations break down at the instant of the Big Bang and the center of a black hole. The two most interesting places in the universe are beyond our reach using Einstein's equations. We need a higher theory, and that's where string theory comes in. String theory takes you before the Big Bang. And what does string theory say? It says that there is a multiverse of universes. String theory says there should be other bubbles out there in a multiverse of bubbles. When two universes collide, it can form another universe. When a universe splits in half, it can create two universes, and that, we think, is the Big Bang. The latest version of string theory is called M-theory. M for membrane, so we now realize that strings can coexist with membranes. So the subatomic particles we see in nature, the quarks, the electrons, are nothing but musical notes on a tiny vibrating string. What is physics? Physics is nothing but the laws of harmony that you can write on vibrating strings. What is chemistry? Chemistry is nothing but the melodies you can play on interacting vibrating strings. What is the universe? The universe is a symphony of vibrating strings. And then what is the mind of God that Albert Einstein eloquently wrote about for the last 30 years of his life? We now, for the first time in history, have a candidate for the mind of God. It is cosmic music resonating through 11-dimensional hyperspace. We are nothing but melodies. We are nothing but cosmic music played out on vibrating strings and membranes, obeying the laws of physics, which is nothing but the laws of harmony of vibrating strings. In my junior year of high school, I took a physics course. I had a fantastic physics teacher, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Freeman Coney. And one day in class, he showed me the closest thing to magic I have ever seen in my life. He did this experiment where you take a board and you tilt it and you let a ball roll down the board. And then you take a stopwatch and time it. And it turns out that the distance the ball travels down the board is proportional to the square of the time on the stopwatch. And he wrote this equation and it describes what's going on. I was thunderstruck because I had always thought of mathematics as being an element of imagination. It was just like making up stories about space flight or reading comic books about superheroes. It was a game of play for me, I, and it was always inside of my head. But to see mathematics suddenly leap outside of my head and be in the world around, around me, I was like, how can this possibly be? And immediately you'll find a hell of a lot is going on in your body and in your perceptual field that you never noticed before. And a lot of After this, there is no turning back. 
You take the blue pill. The story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. You know, what a nutty idea that literally the universe began right as you were born. There was nothing before that. Nothing existed before that. It was born. Yeah. Right when you were born and everything that you, you think of is complete, utter horseshit. Some of my research can be interpreted to suggest that we live in such a world. And that's just kind of mind-blowing. So by studying the equations that, you know, that I've been knocking around with for ever, in the last five or so years, I've been able to show that hidden inside of these equations, there are computer codes. They're the kind of computer codes that make browsers work. And so if the equations that describe our reality have computer codes hidden in them, that's just kind of weird. And in fact, it's so weird that I like to tell people, let's go back to the Matrix movie. If there were physicists in the movie and they want to know they were inside the Matrix, how could they do that? Well, one way might be to try to detect computer codes in the equations that describe their world. But that's what I've just proposed. One thing uh, that you and I have both been backing around, um, or uh, battering rather, around is this idea of uh, the simulation theory idea. We keep bringing it up, man. I wonder if you can manifest that the whole thing really is some sort of a simulation. I wonder if you can manifest that. I wonder if it literally can morph that far around. Dude, um... That sounds so hippie and stupid. It sounds so stoner stupid. It sounds so, oh, that's... dude, I just smoked a joint, man. <laughs> this is the first time I thought about that, man. 